down with people. That's so I went to it. I love that. But anyway, wow. Cool. Hi guys, welcome. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My country is a deep, sweet land of liberty, of the I sing. Land where my father's son, land of my children's friend, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. You guys may be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have a volunteer for an invocation or any sort of motivational phrase, words of wisdom? I have only got a volunteer a couple of times, Ron. Okay. Are you volunteering? No, not right now. Dave said he would. Dave, go for it. I would love that. Thank you. When in doubt, tell the truth. It will confound your enemies and astound your friends. Mark Twain. That's right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I see we have a few guests today. We'll kind of start over here and I might let you guys get introduced by your invitor. Chris, maybe I'll let you go first. Me? Sure. Okay. So I have Mary from Soul Canyon Training and Development. I met at another uh, community event. And I think you were in Yes. Six months, you remember? Not Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for being here. Angela, you're not a stranger to the club, <laughs> but maybe I'll let you introduce yourself to the room. Angela Boothroyd, broker with Windermere, but here today about the Red Executive Association Crab Crack. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. Karen, nice to see you. Thank you. I'll let you have a moment to introduce yourself. I'm Karen Sand. I used to be the events director for the Redmond Chamber, then was at St. Charles Health System, but now I am enjoying life and yeah, not working right now and helping out with the crowd pack. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. And Larry. Well, Hi, I, I'm Larry Holman. I'm the regional manager for a program called Youth Career Connect, which is an internship program, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh, John, let's go ahead and do our 50 50 and then 50. Kind of move into. Larry, would you mind pulling a ticket out of there for me and read the last three digits? 731. Hey, that's oh, me. Mine, oh, <laughs> mine were too. All right, so we'll move into happy dollars and then we'll do announcements. The, the happy dollars are, for those of you that are not familiar, an opportunity to uh, share with the club things that you're grateful for, things that you're happy about, things that are going on in your life that you'd like to brag about. Um, I will go first. Here's a happy dollar for winning the kitty today. Um, a happy dollar for the beautiful sunshine and a happy dollar for our three guests, four guests. Thank you guys for being here. I'll just kind of go around the circle. Ron, I'm just happy to see as many people here and guests. I, loved it. I was hoping I could brag about the Trailblazers and the Oregon men basketball, but after last night, I can't. Oh. <laughs> you watched the last two seconds. Yeah. Um, last night, I did hear your guests, and uh, um, I'm happy uh, I met um, some people last night when I was having dinner, a you know, couple local, and uh, happy for those kinds of moments when you meet people like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. I have $2 uh, for our guests, but also looking for the craft. Very nice. So I have uh, $5 for our guests. And then um, one, I'm really, really confused about what to do on Saturday. Um, I'm a both a Ram and a 49er fan. What do I do? Yeah. Well, I'm happy the. Um, <clears throat> Qantas Foundation has received $17,000 from the Newhouse Foundation to enrich our scholarship program. Wow, that's awesome. 
got one for our, our guests. One for uh, who they who they who they think going to beat them Bengals. <laughs> Forty one years ago, they were in Super Bowl. Actually, it was Close I was gonna say no. It was not that long ago. That's when I became a 49er fan. <laughs> 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 uh, oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I got yeah, distracted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 49er fan. I was gonna say uh, four for the uh, guests here. I'm happy to see everyone, and then uh, one because the miners made it past the Green Bay, and then I just need to fight back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There's no Seahawks fan in here. Um, my husband's a Seahawks fan, so I'm a 49er fan, and he's a Seahawks fan. Yeah, that's how our household is, too. It was a horrible game. Anybody in the virtual world happy today? Nobody's no. happy. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So announcements. Um, I know this Saturday, I want to say 10 a.m. Collection for the food bags. Roland, correct me if I'm wrong. Earl, Earl. correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Uh, the uh, bag collection will be from 10 to 11 at Centennial Park. And uh, I'll be there to pick up your bags. And we'll drop them off at uh, St. Vincent. At the food bank uh, right afterwards. So appreciate everybody bringing them over or letting me know ahead of time and I'll come over and get them for you. Perfect, thank you. Uh, remember to document your volunteer hours. Those are out on the table. If you guys give back in the community, please document that. We report that to Honest International. Um, other updates, let's see. I'm trying to think there. I, I left my little cheat sheet back in my office. I was in a rush to leave. Seize Candy. Seize Candy. We have a pop-up sale Valentine's weekend at the Spokesman Suites. Um, and then there's, there's some sort of downtown stroll on the Saturday. And then on Sunday, they're doing um, the Chamber's putting on some sort of Valentine's Day. Deal. Hannah's there if she wants to clarify. Which... Hannah, do you remember the actual times and dates or the updates? So no one has really given me that much information. I know that um, the sign up sheet is for 10 to 7 on Saturday, and the um, sign up sheet is for Monday, Valentine's Day from um, 10 until 5 or 6. But no, um, I have no idea what the stroll is or the Sunday thing is. Um, I think other people were looking into that. Uh, does anyone like Nicole or Michelle, have you had any emails or know what those involve? So I have not. The chamber did this last year. It's called the Sweetheart Stroll. It's downtown and they, they partnered with the downtown businesses. Angela and I went to it last year. It was a ton of fun. It was very cold. We had our snow boots on, lots of snow down there. And you just walked around. All the shops had different things. Like some had some cookies and drinks and so you could shop and um, it just was kind of to generate, you know, business to the downtown area. It was fun. It was like 11 degree or something. Mm -hmm. like and it's a Saturday. Yeah. Okay, great. Wonderful. So we'll get more information. So. Yeah, we'll get some more info and send that out Thank probably you. through an yeah. email. Um, let's see. You guys are doing a good job reporting or uh, sorry, ordering your lunches. That's super, super helpful. It does expedite the, the weight. We don't have to rely on their kitchen to pump out the food too quickly if you're pre-ordering. So please keep that up. Uh, that's all I have from an announcement standpoint. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share with the club? Okay, we'll move right into you guys' uh, presentation if that's all right. If you guys are ready. I guess I'm going first. <laughs> there you go. Ahead. Come um, on up. So I have a presentation, but since you're up on there, I'll just talk to it. Is that okay. okay? Uh, if you look, that's the easiest way to do that. So we had a. It's not, it's, it's not. It's not. mostly verbiage. Okay. So I can just read off of it. I that's all right. Do you? Yeah, go on there. Sure. Let me just do it from here then. Yeah, that works, that, that works for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, The whole word is adapt, right? That's right. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. All right. So as I introduce myself, uh, I recognize a few people I've worked with uh, over the years, um, but this program is called Youth Career Connect. And my name is Larry Holman, and uh, I've been working on this program since it launched in 2017. And it, it, it's all about connecting students with opportunities. And, you know, so basically, we cover the, the Bend, Redmond, and Jefferson County areas currently. And in each area, we have what's known as an internship coordinator. And each coordinator has that area that we cover. So when I first started, I covered Redmond for about three years. And then right before the pandemic hit, we made a bunch of changes and I took over Ban, and now I manage the region and we're, and we're covering Redmond and Jefferson County. Okay. Now, where does this, so I work for EDCO, um, and which most of you probably know who that is. Um, and it's, so our fiscal partner is East Cascade Works. So basically we contract with East Cascade Works and they, they help the fundraising and so on and so forth and, and helps us get support from all the schools and the businesses and so on and so forth. Um, but Youth Career Connect or YCC, we work directly with students and we work directly with the businesses. So we're kind of that middle, middle of the, of the road person to where we're the facilitator, right? I used to actually say we're the arms dealer and that's just so politically <laughs> incorrect nowadays that I can't do that. Um, but we really do. We really coordinate back and forth, working with the students, trying to, to figure out what their aspirations are and also working with the businesses to be able to figure out you know, kind of what their needs are and how a student, whether it's high school or college, can take in and work into the, to this and get some real world job experience. Because that's really what it's about, is enabling a student to go out into the field and gain real world work experience. That's what it's about. It helps the businesses because there's a right, especially right now, uh, it helps the businesses because you get a chance to see the emerging workforce, the talents they have and so on and so forth. So it takes a lot. Right. It takes the students, it takes the schools, it takes the businesses to all cooperate to make this work. We can't do it by ourselves. So it's a lot of partners. And I want to take and say, too, that that it doesn't come without contributions and so on and so forth. And we have the schools participating and funding this program. We have the Redmond Executive Association. We have the Chamber. Uh, locals, and then we have state funding coming in. And just recently, Central Oregon Association of Realtors came in with a funding funding uh, uh, infusion for us, and so did First Interstate Bank. So, and if you guys are unlucky enough to see, we actually got interviewed where I actually talked on TV for about 30 seconds. <laughs> so uh, that's something that I don't take it really relish in too much. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, but the main thing is allowing these students to be able to gain some perspective allowing them to be able to mature. And honestly, through the past couple of years, they've really had a tough time doing that because they've been stuck behind Zoom calls, trying to get classwork done. They just don't have that direction. Even in the best of times, they still need support and that's what we're there to help them with. So how do we make, why does this work? And this would have been my one graphic, but why does this thing work? And it works because we're the center point between students and the businesses. Before we came along, you have schools reach out to businesses, businesses reach into the schools. They may get contact, they may not. So it's just this big hodgepodge of interconnecting stuff. So what Youth Career Connect, Connect does is basically make it a, a conduit. So if you think of, think of a whole bunch of businesses here, a whole bunch of schools and students here, right? Well, who's facilitating the interactions? Well, now we are, okay? And it's gaining more and more traction as they see the value of this program and the feedback from students and businesses as they've gone through. So what an internship is nothing new, but we put some kind of some guidelines and such around what a typical internship is so that we can answer the questions as you guys have and, and such. Typically, a student will work four to 16, 17 hours a week. Okay, but it varies based on school schedule the businesses and what their availability is and so on and so forth. But the main thing is we don't try to set up barriers. We try to make it as flexible for the business and flexible enough for the students to work mix it work. One of the things that we've worked really hard on is getting cooperation from the schools to be able to take and say, well, can the student get uh, elective credits, right? So all the schools 
districts in, that we work on have agreed to 65 hours of work time allows a student to get what's called a half elective or a one of uh, one class elective and they can do that times two so basically they can get two classes taken care of electives out of the way by working through an internship now if they just take and go and say i don't want to work through your program i just want to go to mcdonald's and look for her or whatever then they have to work 140 hours right so the benefit of working through YCC and getting the internship is one, we work with the students, we help them with the resumes and so on and so forth. And we help them build that confidence to be able to go and get something other than maybe pushing a shopping cart, which there's nothing wrong with that, but is that what you wanna do for the rest of your life, right? Um, and typically it takes 10 to 12 weeks to get to that level, but we don't put that as a cap, it's just a goal, okay? And uh, so some students, in fact, I've still got students working that I placed last year. They're still working in internships and so on and so forth. Some of them have been turned into full-time employees as they graduate from high school, et cetera, okay? We work with anybody that's in school, basically. We have some flexibilities around when they've just graduated and things like that, but now what does that mean in school? That doesn't have to mean um, high school or college, it means part of Oregon Corps, Central Oregon Area Governmental Council, um, you know, a whole host of different organizations that we're tied in. About 80% of our placements so far, and this is since we started, have been paid. So the majority of our, our internships are paid. And currently the rates are running between 15 and $18 an hour, which is when we started, it was 10, right? And while we have unpaid, the majority of our paid. And we've got some, I had one last year that was 26 for a graduating high school with either a high school diploma or a GED. That's phenomenal, right? And a lot of these businesses are investing in the in the students because they want them to, one, they're shorter staff. Two, they see that the, the students are coming out of like high school and going right into the trades. And so they're investing in these students to be able to say, hey, you know what, if you're a good, good worker, et cetera, et cetera. We wanna keep you in here. And I've got a, a, a student that went into a roofing company last year. He's still there and he's, he went right to my school. And that, and we're seeing a lot of trend like that. Um, the type of internships is not just traded sector. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. I've got people going into law, medical, construction, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's, we don't, we're not the ones that decide where they want to go. We just want to help enable them to get there if that's where they want to go, okay? And please, as I'm rambling on here, please ask questions, you know, don't worry about that. So I'm going to throw out a question uh, and see how, see how close we are. So in Central Oregon, how many uh, schools do you think we have? Just in, in the, the corridor, let's take out, um, let's see if I have to take out sisters and, and Cook County. I want to say 26. Well, you're, you're, you're close. Not quite that many, but pretty close. There's 19. And so we've got the high schools, we've got the, uh, the seven high schools in, Red, in Bend, we've got uh, three up in Jefferson County, three in Redmond. And we're not, and currently we're not talking with um, Central Christian, which we're, we're looking to, to expand on that as well. We've got Heart of Oregon Corps, Central Oregon Intergovernmental Council, Oregon Virtual Academy, Baker Charters, Bridge Charter Academy. So the virtual schools are in there and we place uh, a lot of students uh, out of the virtual schools. COCC, Oregon State Cascades. Um, and we place a lot of students that come in from going to, to other universities and colleges. They come back for the summers or are working virtual. We've actually had a lot of virtual uh, students that, that have, are living at home here while attending uh, attending school. Um, so I mean, it's a it, we cover a lot of ground. I'm in a in a school every single day, and, and I just cover the I cover band and then I cover the Redmond business sector. So it's uh it's it's a lot, and working with a lot of students. Yeah, what grade do they start in high school? Does it start from so. Typically, I all start taking and, and doing classroom presentations at freshman level, just to get them kind of thinking about stuff. Um, 
during the pandemic, it's, we've scaled it really to more junior and senior because those are placeable age rates. You have to be very careful on how you place a student because of bully regulations and such. And just from the standpoint of <laughs> academics and things, there, there's a lot of challenges. Um, so we're focusing really on juniors and seniors this year and the college level. So when we get a good college level, it goes right to COCC and OCC, um, which is, you know, we've got good pathways in there. Are you seeing kids uh, trying different things out? You know, let's say that they're interested in one line of work. So they go and intern and they go, oh gosh, you know, this really isn't what I thought it was going to be. So now they're switching over, checking out a different line. Yep. Yeah, I've had that happen fairly often because they don't know. I mean, they, you don't know what you don't know. I have a great, a great story. And so a red and high school student would wanted to be a dental hygienist. And every week I, I was really working to try to get her one. And every week she'd come in, she goes, Larry, when, when am I going to get an opportunity? Just really wanted this uh, to be a dental hygiene. Finally got her one. And she went in there and I saw her like two or three weeks later. And she comes up, she goes, I need to find another intern. <laughs> she goes, I don't ever want to look at an open mouth ever, ever. Again. <laughs> and so, you know, to me, that's a success, you know. And we've had a lot of others that have gone into construction or whatever. And they said, you know, that's the hard work. Uh, I've had some that as the reason we meet with students one-on-one -on -one is to get an idea. And as you do it enough times, you kind of get a feel for, you know, whether they're really serious about stuff. And I had a student come in and say, I want to be a nurse. I said, well, that's really cool. Is that coming from family? Or what? I just want to take care of people. And when, when they talk about a nurse and, and, and God bless them all, they, I said, you know, nurse, that's a, that's a tough job. You're going to have people that are not going to like you very much. They're in pain. They're going to throw up on you. There's going to be blood. And she'll and turn white. And she said, blood? <laughs> and I go, yeah. And at that point, I said, you know what you need to do is to take and kind of think about what you're doing. Talk to your parents. Talk to some people that you want to know. And if you want, I said, my wife works in the medical field. I said, I'd be happy to introduce you. She goes, nope, no way. So, you know, it, it's, it's uncovering, you know, peeling back the onion and, and so on and so forth. And that's what's really, you know, kind of rewarding for us is as you work with students and help guide them through things, it, it, it really does, it, it, it's something that's really needed. And, and I think that the schools are having, the, having their struggles with the pandemic and all that. And so they're really starting to rely on us more and seeing the value. I did a bunch of uh, mock interviews this this last week, you know, and the students are just they just really are trying to trying, and and I think that they're making some great headway, but they, they need that they need those uh, extra a little bit extra coaching. Um, in fact, I met with an OSU uh, Cascade student last year, senior graduating was so <coughs> nervous for the interview, and so we did I did a bunch of interviews, probably forty five minutes of coaching virtually, right. And really settled her down, got her confidence level up. She's still working at, at um, Broken Talk Candle Company. She got in there, full time employee, landed it. I knew she had it in her. It just was a matter she just needed a little extra. And that's what I really enjoy. So, working with these kids, we do, we help them with their resumes. They have to set up a student profile, which is our system that we've developed, and, and so on and so forth. And so, we not only meet with the students, but we meet with the teachers. In fact, this afternoon, I meet with uh, uh, several Mountain View uh, high school teachers to let them know what the program's about. We're not there to, to, to impede on what they're doing. We're there to help. We're not there to create a barrier, but we'll knock them down. And by working with the teachers and the students, the teachers are going to say, hey, you need to meet with Joey or Sally. And that's, that's where this is, that communication, that network building, and the confidence. They have to know that we are bringing a value. Larry, yeah. for those those unpaid internships what yep. is what does that typically look like so a lot, a lot of nonprofit type companies will do no, unpaid or very specific uh like i have some that are in video production where they come in and the the company doesn't actually need the student they allow them to come in and work their equipment and and actually go on shoots and be part of the production team so the main thing that we have to worry about on unpaid is that you don't violate any labor laws like I had one come in, they wanted the, a hotel to cleaning and wanted to try to do it unpaid. And I said, yeah, that's not gonna fly. So, you know, we have to be that kind of that, that monitor as well. 
when an unpaid comes up and sometimes, you know, <laughs> they want to try to pull it off and I go, no, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, oh, so I can speak really directly to this. I have a, a intern, a program rock trails that's from the Career Connect. Um, Miriam, she's fabulous. You might have seen the, the uh, Santa's Coffee Collaboration posters. She created those. So the reason I wanted Miriam, or that I, I connected with you guys at Career Connect, is because um, the, with the digital age, there is so much marketing out there in social media and whatnot that is over my head. And I thought, I really want to get somebody young who can like navigate through this. We haven't had a chance to do a lot of social media marketing, but she has done the flyers. She's a pro <coughs> proficient on Canva, which as you guys know is one of the, um, one of the best um, products out there for creating flyers and marketing materials. Um, it is an unpaid um, um, internship as of now because we got her after our budget went through. Um, <laughs> however, because she is so proficient at what she does, we can see moving it into a paid internship because she, it is such a, she is so, so talented. Um, but anyway, I, just to speak to that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and we meet once a week for an hour and then she does a small project. So we, just what, he's, what um, Larry said, we are very careful about the use of her time. And she was, we give her just enough work that she was able to take on a second internship. So it, it works out for her that she has these two opportunities. Yeah, and she's doing both great in both. And, and she's actually lives over in the Valley. Yeah. So yeah. She's, she, it's all virtual. And we see a lot of that, you know, you know, requests to do that. It has to work on both sides, obviously. But, you know, um, so we have college students that are willing to do that. If, talk about looking great on a resume. That's what she's looking to build. I've worked with her for a bit. She's just, she just needs to have that, that experience of having somebody give her a project. Can you get that back? Now, if you were to take and say, you know, we're going to take and, you know, build out all these big campaigns and all this that and take advantage of the time so forth that's not a learning experience that's taking advantage of which does, and that's where we kind of go and see you know we got to be careful here yeah so um yeah we have them but it's not not a ton of them do they right. um ever get in a situation where they get college credit yes absolutely you can get college credit um and i did say that earlier um we still work for the 65 hours even though in the college level <laughs> they've got to have roughly 100 to 120 it depends on the, the course right it depends on the internship and it has to have a professor approval i've had one intern that got eight full college units out of it out of one internship there are colleges that build their whole lives around work study kind of yep. stuff i don't know how many of them there are nowadays but they still there's a lot of promotion to do the work study um, <laughs> you know if, if it's in the right pathway yeah you know a marketing you know, OSU Cascade doesn't have a, a true marketing pathway, but through the business uh, department, which we're really close with, we try to take and line them up that way. And, and, and Kim Vieira, who's great, she just feeds me students all the time, which is, which is really good. Which brings me to how many businesses are involved and, and how does a business get involved? <laughs> so I'm going to get to that. <laughs> so thank you for that segue. <laughs> So on the business side, so the students, we've covered that pretty well. Uh, the business side, we go, we do outreach all the time. So I'm, I don't, I, one of my pet peeves, I hate cold calls. So that's my plug to everybody here. If you know of any businesses, please let me know. I love warm intros than, than a cold call, but I do cold calls all the time. Last week, I worked, reached out to over hundred uh, companies. I'm very much an emailer um, because I respect people's time and businesses. Um, and such like that. And, um, but in the course of a year, I'll reach out to over 700 businesses just in Bend. Larry, who, who at the business are you trying to talk to, HR? It, it varies. It depends, yeah. you know, basically all of the, the I, I get into a lot of databases. And so I go to the top, I'll go to the president, CEO, or HR. Okay. Yeah. So it's whoever wants to take and answer my calls or answer my emails. Right. So I can be pretty tenacious about it. And usually it's a sales. This is a sales position, 100%. So probably takes five to six times to get somebody to take and say, no, Larry, I don't want to do your program. Or yeah, let's set something up. I'm tired of you sending me an email. Wearing them down. Where, I'm wearing them down. Well, you know, I'm, there's probably a lot of familiarity with that across the, the table here. What are your top targets as far as business? 
what type of business? So. Well, I go, I throw the net really wide because, uh, but typically in the, as we're coming up on the summer season, construction, a lot of the trade manufacturing are very high targeted, um, you know, technology, uh, the, you know, programming, web design, uh, things like that are very popular. Uh, biomed is starting to be a lot more uh, and, and medical are, are coming in more and more because the classes, the students or the schools are getting more and more uh, CT related uh, funding. And so they're trying to build out their CT programs. So it's a lot more hands-on training. And that is really a positive thing because that's really what the business community wants is trained skills as they come out of school. And some of these kids are absolutely incredible. When you say CT, what CT? Uh, computer technology and engineering. Wow. So it's basically, it's basically all the stuff that's hands-on. And, and it, there's a huge amount of different fields that fit into that category. And, you know, um, <clears throat> medical fits into it. All the constructions do. So each high school specifically has a lot of different types of pathways like Redmond High School is very heavy into construction, welding, CNC training. I put some kids into, into uh, opportunities like at FuelSafe, um, you know, some of those types of companies, uh, composite approach, and they're really well trained. I mean, they, they do a fabulous job. Ridgeview has their own set of, of pathways, Ben, Mountain View, they all have a little bit tweaky, you know, in the way that they approach their, their programs so that you know, so I have to know that. So when the students are coming in, so which classes are you in and so on and so forth, so that I can gauge kind of how to help them find an opportunity. My uh, my son has a, uh, and his wife have a physical therapy, sports yeah. medicine practice in, in Bend. And uh, what's the name of it? Because I actually have a capacity. Kid. It's okay. A, it's a small one. We just started. Um, the, uh, do a whole variety of different things. Uh, he works with high school, college athletes, that kind of stuff too. Yeah, I have an excellent, excellent I have an excellent senior graduating yeah. that wants to be a physical therapist. So I'm gonna All right. I just met with him and I'm that's he's actually on my list to try to go out. So I'm gonna give him a call. Okay. <laughs> have you had much luck with financial institutions? Because I know originally when this started I brought it to the bank and they were concerned about privacy. No, so I have not had much luck. Uh, I'm hoping you might have somebody that got on board that I can. <laughs> yeah. like they're doing it. <laughs> well, right now what I'm trying to do and is to get a student that's underage into a law office, and we've got a pathway to where you just basically the gist is is that you need to sign a non-disclosure, but it has to be parent co-signed, mm -hmm. and as long as we get the legal part of it, and I think we're there. And I've done that with the Redmond City as well, where they had a requirement that they had to be over 18 because of that, mm -hmm. so we worked around it. So there are ways you can do it if the policies of the institution is willing to be flexible on it. Okay. Larry, um, I was just, um, I was walking with Julie, Julie who staff this morning. They have 865 job openings at St. Charles. Do you have a partnership with St. Charles? They're looking for- um, I have uh, Stephanie Nipples on my advisory board okay. who works in the, in the, at St. Charles and they are not doing any youth, um, they're not bringing in any youth because of the pandemic. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, I have, mm -hmm. I could put, you know, tons of students going through that because they have great programs to go through there. I wish we could take and, and, and get somebody in there just to start the trend. Um, and then are you hiring out the Redmond position? Yes. You're looking for yeah, so currently we have two people, myself and Debbie, who covers Jefferson County, and, and we're co covering Redmond right now. And then we have, uh, we've been in the search and we have interviews set up for next Tuesday for several candidates that actually look really good. So I'm hoping that we get somebody in the chair so we don't have them double cover. Yeah. Larry, I want to say like before the pandemic, in you when you were in the Redmond position, you had over a hundred positions filled. Is that, is that right? I, the, my best in the Redmond area was 83 or something like that. Effect. Okay. And you mentioned value. Is there a way that you've been able to quantify what the economic value is what, like of all those kids that got paid internships what that roughly I haven't to. done that study and, and you're not the first to ask that uh, probably that's a summer project for me to dive in because we do collect you know what the wages are the amount of hours that they've worked 
and so on and so forth and cover that because with 80 some percent actually it's a little higher than 80 i try to be conservative but getting paid and with the pay rates that we're seeing today and it keeps going up i mean the value proposition is actually you know there's there's a lot of economic contribution by this program yeah and it's not just like i i will say not just like that because the other side of that is we sent our son to firefighter school we did a whole year at the college did great paid out of state tuition fees and then he went into his second year in the emt classes and he wanted nothing to do with it he, he couldn't he didn't want to do it he didn't like it so you know we wasted a year of that of out of state tuition fees for something that he decided you know a year into it he didn't want to do so that's that's the plus of you know having them be able to try different jobs and find that out before they invest into it yeah i think it's really important that they do get some work experience and, and it's in parallel to their academics and i always tell them i said don't let the, the job interfere with your academics but you should be able to take and do that because in the real world you're always going to be learning and you're always going to be working so you might as well figure out how to do that now and, and make this work and be able to go down a pathway that that you want to have and that you're passionate about um i love it when a student comes in that has boy they're just like this is what i want to do da, 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 and you know and we're able to line them up and and you hear later a year or so later that they're still going or whatever it happens to be um and like with the with the trades they're they're it's opening up a lot more the schools are promoting the trades more we built that stereotype ourselves i mean by taking the thing you have to go to a four-year school you have to get that degree you have to do this have to do that and when there's great opportunities in the trades and the trades are starving for entry-level workers I hear, it all, I hear it all the time some of builders has been a great uh, they brought in brought in interns that are still working there from last year um you know like i said the roofing companies are doing it so on and so forth so there's opportunities across the board well to amber's point it was just i got at year three in college you got to go in and do extra right and so i got all the way through the program almost mm -hmm. one year from graduating and said oh my god i hate the medical field god bless them all but i don't <laughs> like it <laughs> but i mean what a waste yeah um you know, and talk about student loans and debt, you just go, you know, going back to real estate is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, is that's what a lot of the, the, they're taking and saying, in now it's more in the schools where they're taking and saying, you have the opportunity to go to school, you've got good grades, you've got this, you've got that, you've got that, but have you considered going into the trades? And here's, you know, you're, you've taken these types of classes, these are all trade-related classes, we specialize in these, what do you think, you know? And so we try to time in and I've done a couple of where I'll just have the student talk to someone and take and say, you know, don't let's just listen to me, go take and talk to somebody in the field and let them know because they've got their stories that are, are real and true. My son-in-law, both my son-in-laws are in, in construction and um, EJ, he's not 30, he's 29 and he's a superintendent for Kirby Nickel. <clears throat> He, he's helped build, he helped build Caldera School and one of the middle schools, but I, I don't remember which one now, in, in Van. I mean, he, he's got, he drives a $70,000 brand new Kirby and Golf pickup. I mean, and he's not even 30. So, and he's making good money, you know. As you guys know, we have Olivia going to you right now, getting her four year degree in political science and we continue to tell her gone are the days of graduating with a communications degree or a social services degree you know, without a specialty that you have to kind of nail down something for her probably internships throughout her college career but there has to be a specialty in order to be competitive in the workforce you do and that's you're, you're very right and that's why i think that it is important and you mentioned trying out different internships mm -hmm. i've got a call i think it's tomorrow with a student that i that is going to college i don't even know where she's at right now but um i worked with her in ridgeview i worked with her placed her sister at ready i placed her brother at, at wallace group last year i've had students that work have worked in three to four three or four different internships so i mean it this is this is what it takes and it takes a lot of community support the school support to be able to help them understand that it's okay. This isn't your lifelong career, 
right? It's okay to test it out and it's okay to take and say, this one's not, not right for me without having to go through the full, you know, um, post, you know, the college ranks, right? And inherit those great big debts. You know, it just, there's just opportunity. Let me share one thing too, kind of following up on what you were saying. I had an internship my senior year, my entire senior year undergraduate school. Uh, and I was going to school in Washington, D.C. at George Washington University. Um, and that changed my life. It really did. I worked on Capitol Hill. I worked for a U.S. Senator. And, um, you know, all things aside, there were certain downsides to that. But I did an international economics undergraduate degree and then economics graduate degree. And I was set to go. I knew what I wanted to do. I kind of figured it out and um, worked on the hill afterwards for a while, but I wouldn't have uh, gone where I went, but for the absence of that situation. We worked full time, got together once a week as a group, and uh, the university sponsored it, but it was, uh, it was a great experience. It really was. I've heard that from a number of, a number of people that say that because of my internship, this is where I'm at and I'm glad I did it. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that this program in 25 years or whatever you want to pick a number that we're going to have students that comes in and says, thanks to, to this program, you know, I'm, I'm able, was able to take and pick the career that I wanted. So, Sarah, um, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Thank you so much. I'm just looking at the time and yeah, no, we got to talk I'm about fine. how you're funded. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> For one of the funding sources. <laughs> 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 You know me, I've got to, once I get an audience, though. So. <laughs> yeah, so Angela, can you talk to us about that? Sure. The major so, in uh, 2015, Redmond Executive Association, I'm going to stand up here by you, Larry. Redmond Executive Association, <laughs> uh, which is mostly a business-focused organization, uh, was doing some brainstorming, trying to figure out things we could do to help improve specifically the downtown core of Redmond, what we were missing in our community. And uh, after several meetings, several of you around this table were there, we came down to some low hanging fruit items. And one of them was we were missing a signature event. We missed the hangar hop. We missed some of the other things that used to happen. And I had just been to, um, oh geez, Mobley's Gra Grass Valley and they have this crab feed up there. And so I said, oh, I know an event we could do. I don't know how much money they'll make. And they're like, oh, don't have to make any money. Just don't lose more than $5,000. I'm like, yes, this is my kind of event. So we went out to the community and some of you around the table, um, Alliance Professionals, Mid-State Fertilizer, Amber Wilson. Several of you have been with us uh, from the very beginning, which our first one was in 2016. And we put together this crab feed that the idea was to create an event for the community that paid for itself or came close to paying for itself, but it was not supposed to take money away from other organizations. So we didn't want to take money away from, we didn't want your sponsor for Kiwanis Oktoberfest to say, oh, we're going to do crab crack this year instead. We wanted it to be kind of a standalone and add to the community, not take away from it. So that first year we actually made, uh, I think $12,500 or something like that. John probably remembers. And it went to uh, was something each of the high schools. So it went to football at uh, Redmond and um, the culinary program at Ridgeview. And I don't remember what it went to at RPA, but we spread all those funds out and we're like, wow, we can actually make a little bit of money. And I was very much interested in this idea of internship programs. So we were really pushing to help get that going and did some several John Stark jumped on board Larry came on board um, and it became a real thing that needed real funding and so we needed to put our money where our mouth was a little bit so we revamped the crab crack just a little bit added a few sponsors but we don't take all the sponsors that we we have a wait list for sponsors because we don't want to take them out of other community events and we our goal is to make twenty two thousand dollars a year because that's our commitment to this program and we try, try not to make any less for sure, but we try and keep it right around there so that we're uh, keeping the community healthy. And so far, the first year we sold 500 tickets and I drove them to Prineville, I drove them to Madras, Culver, I drove them everywhere. Second year, the chamber helped us and we sold them out in about three days. 
third year, I think it was 10 hours, fourth year, it was four hours, fifth year, four hours, and this year it took us about four hours. And then we're at maybe a little over 550, unless you work with OLCC, then we're at 500. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's an all-you-can-eat crab feed in a tent in the in the parking lot downtown off, off of Evergreen between 7th and 8th Street. Um, Dungeness crab comes from the Owaco area this year, and uh, you get shrimp cocktail, salad, bread, lasagna for those non-crab people, whoever you may be. But I'm going to, and just, I know we're really short on time. I have two things I'd like Karen to, to talk to you for a second, but I'm going to give you a pro tip for letting us be here today. One is, even though the tickets are sold out, and I have several of you around the table have them, if you like crab but aren't going to be at the crab crack, you're going to want to remember the directions to my house for Sunday morning because we sell all the additional extra crab we have the next day. And my house is a block and a half north of City Council or City Hall on 10th Street. And it'll be hard to miss because there'll be a wild ride beer truck and a bunch of people running around. So a uh, 10th Street between uh, Black Butte and Cascade and on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, we start selling extra crab. And if you bring your growler, we give away all the beer that's left too. Yeah. So if you want to join us. And I'd like to really thank Karen. Our, our volunteers make this all happen. And uh, Karen Sand has generously stepped up again to be our volunteer coordinator. And that's the biggest thing to take off my plate is just amazing. And she makes sure all these moving pieces, all of you know that have done volunteer things, it's not very easy to coordinate to herd all these cats. So Karen? Well, this year we're doing really good, surprisingly, because it's harder with the COVID going on and not getting help from the schools, the students and stuff. So we've reached out to the junior ROTC. They've got 15 volunteers coming, cadets helping us. And then this year, Young Life is helping us. And we're hoping to get a few more from them. This depends on the COVID because it's hitting their students now. So but we're hoping to get some more. I do have some openings later in the afternoon at the end of the event. So if you know of anybody that needs, wants to participate, have them contact me. I can, um, if Angela knows how to reach me or I think Amber does. Amber does, yeah. yeah. So you don't have my email or phone number. Um, but yeah, we do have a couple of positions. Definitely, I'm waiting for a reply on, but that have helped us with the coffee and the um, waters and stuff. But they've done it for last five years, but I haven't heard back from them. So I might definitely have those positions to fill, along with cleanup. Cleanup is always a big one at the end, getting everything together. Um, but yeah, if you are attending the event and want to help clean up afterwards, you can always use those help too. So, Carl, could yeah. we put um, could we put an email out to the crew to the the club and see if anybody's available for help with that and put Karen's information? Yep, I can leave you my email address okay, and good. number. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. See, that's what happens when you have somebody comes in right at the first and eats up the whole book the whole time. No, no, no. You don't have to talk very long. No, no, no. Larry, this is wonderful conversation. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you guys for being here. All, all four of you guests, yeah. but you three, thank you. Thank you. What you guys do in the community is very, very important. We, we love it. I would attend every year and have a blast. So thank you guys. Um, please remember to tip your server. And with that, we are dismissed. Thank you guys. Thank you.